So welcome everyone. You're all the live webinar, live landing page critiques with usability expert, myself, Michelle Sherritt. Today's session is being sponsored by a company called Situated Research, which is my company. Uh, we are located um, in the suburbs of Chicago in Naperville, Illinois, and we are a usability firm where we actually do critiques of websites. Uh, we also do um, usability reports and critiquing of software and of video games. As I said earlier, today's session will be recorded and the recording will be available within 48 hours on our website, our Facebook page, Twitter account, and YouTube. Today's topics, we are going to discuss navigation structure within your website, also your organization of your website. How is your website organized? Is it laid out in a logical manner where users can quickly navigate through the site as well as find information quickly? The second topic we will talk about um, kind of commingles a bunch of topics. Um, it goes into color psychology. So the colors on your website, do they make sense? What do certain colors mean? Um, the graphics on your site, do you have too many graphics? Do you have appropriate graphics? Uh, font sizes are important as well, and we'll talk about that. Um, general color of your website, does it correlate with your logo, the colors that are within your logo? Um, is it consistent throughout the site? Uh, headings, um, as well as website copies. So is your website too wordy? Are you repeating yourself um, on different pages of your site just to fill up real estate? Uh, what are the page lengths? Are you making users scroll? We're going to talk about all of that, the benefits, the pros, the cons to each of those as well. We're also going to talk about social media integration and SEO. And we're also going to talk about page layout and structure. So real quickly, my company, Situated Research, uh, conducts usability um, critiques on companies' websites. So we actually look at companies' websites. We do a critique. Um, we've done over 5,000 website reviews in the last six years. And our team here at Situated Research has really written the playbook on usability for website design. Um, we were one of the first companies to actually come out with a free usability report for our potential clients and for companies that come to us who want their websites simply reviewed so that they can take that report back to their team and make the tweaks that they need to to their website to update it. So we were actually the first ones to write that report, come up with the 20 different areas of unique usability um, heuristics for uh, the industry in order to review a website properly. So all websites, um, we've come to the conclusion, do have issues or concerns when it comes to usability. And why is this? Well, the reason could be a company designed a website on their own. Um, a company wanted to go the cheap route, so they did that. Um, they didn't hire usability experts. They just hired web designers who simply know how to program websites. Um, so a slew of issues and concerns with everyone's website. Nobody's website is perfect. Um, however, here at Situated Research, what we want to do is to help companies to take their websites and make them the best that they can. Because if users go to your website and they can't use it properly, they can't find the information that they want quickly, they can't order products, they can't find out about your services, what's going to happen? Well, think about when you go to a website and you open it up and you click on it and you're clicking through and you're looking for certain information and you can't find it. Or simply it's too confusing or there's too much information, it's information overload. And what do you do? You leave the site. You go to a different site within the industry that you're looking for. So um, you don't want people to be leaving your website. So that's our whole point here at Situated Research is that we want to make sure that people stay on your website. And after that, they find the information that they need quickly and promptly. They order products or learn about your services very quickly, and then they order from you. So that's our goal here. So in order to make that goal happen, we offer a free usability report for potential clients. So any business can come to us and request a free usability report um, it goes over 20 unique areas of usability, which we're going to go through today. 
and it actually gives business owners an insight into their website and what users are looking for because biz business owners we're not sure what our users are looking for all the time unless we do surveys and we conduct research and since we are a research company here at situated research we know what they're looking for we know what users are wanting to see and if we don't see that on your website we let you know that and we can fix it so our free usability report real quickly it includes an analysis of 20 unique areas of usability on your company website so we actually look at a criteria and then we look at your website and we compare and we see if it matches. And if it doesn't, we see how off base you are. We give you that score. So you get a final grade at the end with action items to improve your website's effectiveness. Also throughout the report, we give you a summary of your branding and overall marketing effectiveness. We also give you an analysis of your website's menu navigation structure and ease of use. So that ease of use is how long does it take a user once they get to your site to find certain information or to order a product or to learn about your services. And the way that we do that is we actually have users test your website and go through these 20 unique areas of usability. So we have five to 10 users who actually look at your website, go through it, act as if they are a potential customer and want to buy a product or learn more about your services. So why is this important? Why is usability so important with websites? Um, all of these improvements with the 20 unique areas of usability help your website to retain customers, to build trust on the internet, and to boost your sales. It's proven with the 5, 000, over 5,000 uh, reports that we've done that it does boost um, the number of customers who come back to your website, so repeat customers. Um, it also improves trust. If your website looks and feels and functions correctly and your users are happy when they come to your site, it builds trust. Um, and you can retain customers and you'll have repeat customers because you've improved the usability on your website. So without further ado, we said that we would do some live reviews this afternoon, some live critiques of websites. And so these companies, um, we have representation from all of these companies uh, attending the webinar today. So I simply went through the registration and just picked um, a few companies to go through. Um, we're going to be going, looking at Standard Market here in Chicago. We're also going to be looking at Cisco. Lagunitas Brewing Company is also attending today, uh, Wayfair is attending, and Michael Graham Salon and Spa, which is a local company here um, in Chicago, we were going to look at their site as well. If we have time at the end when we do Q&A, um, if anyone would like their website reviewed live uh, today and you're not one of these companies, you can go ahead and type your company name and the URL to your website in the upper right hand corner in your chat box and we'll get through as many as we can. Um, we won't go through all the 20 unique different areas of usability but we can go through a few uh, just to give you an idea and if you want the rest, re rest of the report you can contact us and we can do that for you. Uh, something that I didn't mention with the report is that yes it is a free report but then what we do is we email you and let you know that the report is ready to be reviewed. And then after that, we set up a time where we can actually go over it on the phone with you. So we give you a few days to look at it, review it, come up with some questions, and then we go ahead and contact you and go through those questions with you. So we don't go through all 20 different areas with you over the phone. We give you a few days to look at that report and then come up with the questions that you might have from the report and then we answer those for you. There's no obligation, you're not purchasing anything, you don't have to purchase um, a website uh, redesign from us. Uh, simply, we just wanna go through the report and help you out. And in the future, if word of mouth, you let another company know what we did for you, or you wanna go ahead and update your website, we would hope that you would contact us. So we're gonna go ahead and do the live reviews. So we will start with standard market. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull up our actual report. And then I'm going to go ahead and we're going to review uh, the site. 
So here is our actual free usability report. And there's some things within the report that are very important. Um, one thing that we look at when we look at your site is to make sure that there are no programming errors within the website. Um, we check with validator.w3.org. This is a great free tool where you could actually go on right now and test your website. Um, you have to put in the URL to each page of your site. So your home page, your about us page, contact page, you have to copy the URL into validator.w3.org to see the programming errors on each page of your site. So if you just put in your home page, it's only going to pull up the errors for your home page. So when we do the report, that's what we do. Um, we just do your home page, we see how many programming errors you have. Programming errors you don't want to have. Okay, you're going to get a list of a few. Um, hopefully only five to ten. If you have any more than that, um, your website may not be properly loading or properly showing to users in different browsers and different search engines. So you want to make sure that there are no programming errors at all. You're not going to know what those programming errors are. I mean, it's going to list them out. You can always print it out and give it to your programmer or give it to your web design company or give it to us and we can go ahead and fix those errors for you. In the report, we also do an SEO score. So we use marketing.grader.com. Um, marketing.grader.com is through a company called HubSpot, which most of us are familiar with. It's a free report that actually goes through your search engine optimization. It also goes through your social media um, integration on your website. So it looks to make sure that if, okay, this company has a blog on their website, uh, we want to make sure that these blog entries are being spread across this company's social media outlets. So it's going to look at your Facebook page, your Twitter account, your Instagram account, all of your accounts to make sure that that's happening. It's also going to look at keywords within those posts uh, to make sure that they are correct and to make sure that the SEO on your website is correct as well with those keywords to make sure that they integrate together. So marketing.grader.com is a free tool. So these are both free tools that we look at um, when we evaluate your site. When we do the free uh, critiques today, we are not going to be going through those two. So here are the 20 different areas of usability that we look at in the report. Um, for user experience, we look to make sure that there is a clear essence of the business. So on your home page, does your logo and the colors within your logo match the rest of the colors of your website? Um, do you have a good, clear message on your home page telling us exactly what your business does? Is there a clear, is branding clear? Um, so we look at all of that. Uh, color psychology, as I just mentioned. Aesthetics of your site design. Is your site consistent? from page to page, or does the design change quickly? Because that will throw users off, because users will then have to reorient themselves to each page. Um, a lot of companies, when we evaluate their websites, there are many navigation on their home pages at the top, which is what we would expect, um, or at the bottom. And then when you go to other pages, internal pages of the site, the menu navigation shifts to the left or to the right. And that's poor usability because users then have to reorient themselves to the page, to the site, where na menu navigation is. Another thing that clients do is they have the main header, main navigation on the home page at the top or at the bottom. Then you go to an internal page and it shifts to the left or to the right, usually to the left. But then the menu items, the naming, the labeling changes as well. So that really throws users off. So if you have a site like that, you really need to reevaluate the menu navigation. We also look to make sure that the website's enjoyable and fun to use. Um, we don't want uh, copy overload, so wordiness. We want the website to entertain users, not bore them to death, or they're going to leave. We also want to make sure that the copy within the website is motivating, gives powerful messages, and gives clear calls to action. Consistency is key. Consistency is probably the number one 
um, critique that we look at because if your website isn't consistent from page to page, as I stated earlier, users have to reorient themselves to each page. And that sometimes makes users leave the site. And we also have to look at ease in locating typical information. So when you go to a website, users want to see a homepage about us, um, services, uh, shopping cart, if there's a shopping cart to order items, um, about the items, and we also want to see a contact us page. We want to see social media integration as well. So those items we look at too. Some heuristics that we look at, we look at the functional design or the wireframe of the website. Um, with our sister company, QCamp, we actually um, go ahead and we go through this report as well with clients. Um, but when we design websites, we actually come up with wireframes. So wireframes are just basically um, architectural layouts of each page of your site. So where are items going to be located? So we put a box at the top and we say, okay, menu items, menu buttons are going to go here. Here's the labeling. Um, a video is going to go here. So we make a box and we say video. So that's just a rough outline of what each page will look like. So we want to make sure um, that when we do that for our clients, that the functionality is there as well. So we're placing a video on the homepage. Does that make sense for the clientele for this client, um, for the users that are going to come to the site? So we look at all of that. We also look at the navigation to make sure that it's simple and not overcomplicated. Many clients come to us and they have so many submenus under their main menu navigation. And when that happens, data information can get lost and users can get confused. So we look at that menu navigation and labeling. We want clear, distinct labeling. We don't want anything that's confusing. So if a button is going to show you services, it should just be labeled services. We also want to look at and make sure that it follows web standards, meaning we look at hyperlinks to make sure that they're colored blue and underlined because that's what users are used to. Um, that's a web standard. So we look at these different standards to make sure that they're implemented within your site. We also look at the readability of your font size and the color of your font. Um, we've critiqued websites where they have a black background and white text, and it's for um, their user group or elderly people. And so it's really hard for elderly people to go on the internet and look at this site because it has a dark background, the text is white, the font size is small. So you're not making your site for your users, you're simply going after aesthetics that you feel look great um, and not thinking about your audience. So we look at that as well. We also look at verbiage. So we look at grammar and the style of the verbiage. We also look for contact information, making sure that people can always contact you whether that be through your social media integration or through your Contact Us page. Um, and we also look at help and documentation. So do you have a search box on your website? Do you need one? Uh, do you have a site map so that people could quickly see the pages of your site and go and search what they need to quickly? Um, does your website need documentation? Is it overcomplicated? So going back to the user experience. So we're going to go through these different areas, um, all 20 different areas, um, not on each website um, that we're doing the live review, we'll pick and choose a few, um, but we will reach each area. Okay, so the first site that we're going to look at is Standard Market, so let me go ahead and pull that up. Okay, so here's Standard Market's website, and this is their homepage. Okay, so we can see um, that they have their logo in the upper left-hand corner, which is great. Um, they have Standard Market and Standard Market Grill at the top. Um, they also want you to sign up for updates. That's important, so that's at the top of their page. Um, they want you to like them on Facebook, and they have a slider going. So someone might be like, well, where's their main menu navigation? How do I search around the website? Um, so you'd probably scroll down and look and you can see all these boxes of different information so you might think that that's their menu but then when you get to the bottom you see that their menu is at the bottom 
so this is just the design that Standard Market chose. Um, a lot more websites are actually having their menu navigation at the bottom of the page, which is completely fine. Making sure that each internal page also has the menu navigation at the bottom of each page. Remember consistency. So this is the first um, impression that I'm getting with this website. So let's go ahead and look at the first criteria. Um, we're looking to make sure that the website clearly indicates the nature of their business and their products. So this criteria, it looks at what your site communicates through text, images, the logo, any taglines. So do they correlate to create a strong impression with good corporate branding? So this is where we're looking at the home page. So we're looking at the logo, Standard Market Chicago. And if someone didn't know what Standard Market was, would they be able to figure it out by looking at the home page? So we're looking, the slideshow's going, um, would any of you figure out that this was a market in Chicago where you could purchase food or eat food? Okay, so some of you are typing in no. Some of you are typing in yes, they're showing pictures of food. Yes, they're showing pictures of food. This would tell me that it's like a restaurant or something like that. They really need to have a tagline, um, something on the home page that says, hey, we're a supermarket. We also have a grill. Um, we offer food. Um, you can come and stay. You can go to our grill. You can eat. You can drink. We have a beer bar. Like You wouldn't know any of this from just looking at the home page. So they would get a very low score here. Um, the next criteria that we look at is color psychology. So the colors of the site, do they correlate with the colors that are in the logo? Well, Standard Market's logo is black and white. So we really could go with any color combination here. Um, I'm glad you know that they chose different colors uh, because it is black and white, anything will go with black, um, and it really makes the site pop. So what I wouldn't want to see is that they took the black and white logo and they made the background all black. That would be bad, and we've seen that before. So I would say they get a very good score. If I were to click on an internal page, let's just click on a page. We have a white background with black text. So. Um, makes everything pop, makes the colors pop, makes the text pop. So this is really good. Okay. Our next criteria is we're looking at the aesthetics. Okay, so we're looking at the aesthetics um, of the site. So we're looking to make sure that the creative flow is there um, through each page, that it actually is consistent. Um, so we would go ahead and go through and actually click through their pages, which we just did, to make sure that that was actually correct and that the aesthetics do flow throughout the website. So for this website, they do. So the next criteria is we go ahead and see, okay, is the website enjoyable and fun to use? So if we were to click through the site, so let's click wine. Um, the imagery is, is really bright. It pops. Um, it makes it enjoyable for me to look through and to find information. Um, I like the imagery. I like the layout. Um, it's just really done really well. Um, so I would give them a really good score here. Okay, the next criteria is we're looking at the fun factor or the boring factor. I think we just sort of answered that. It is fun to use. Going through the imagery that they used is really nice. Um, so I would give them a high score there. Now content, we're actually looking at the wordiness of the website. 
um, so what we're looking here is to make sure that there is an information overload so we just click on a few pages and just make sure that you don't have to scroll and scroll and scroll through to find information so when you have to scroll users typically don't scroll on the internet um, they do skim content uh, they will never read word for word so just think about you when you go to a site what do you do so you don't read word for word you're skimming through the information to find out what you came for what you were looking for um, if someone comes to a website where they have to scroll and scroll through information they're going to leave the site because it's too overwhelming for them so i would say that this website did a great job it's very clear very simple information is given to you very quickly if i want to learn about the wine beer and cheese bar um, i have a little synopsis here and that's it with some links um, so very good very well done the next criteria that we look at is the verbiage of the site is it motivating is there a clear call to action now not every industry is going to have this so this is a supermarket slash grill um, their call to action is they want you to purchase their food they want you to come to their grill and they do that through their imagery on the site which they do very well um, not through their content so for this particular criteria it doesn't really uh, work for this site um, however in the other sites that we're going to go ahead and look at we will go ahead and look at that verbiage and make sure that there are clear calls to action Um, the next criteria is using that marketing.greater.com. So we're actually looking um, for their SEO score and how they incorporate social media. So we would actually, we can go to marketing.greater.com. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, let me just copy your all in there. Okay, so let's go to marketing.greater.com. Okay, so this is gonna take us to HubSpot's website. We're gonna go ahead and put in the URL and we'll go ahead and put in our email address. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and hit grade me. So what this is doing is it's going to go ahead and generate a report based off their marketing. So looking at their SEO, looking at their social media marketing, seeing how they integrated it within their website, how well they did. Um, so it just takes a few seconds to get that overall score. And it's gonna go through their blog. It's gonna go through, um, after it finds the blog, it's gonna go through each item. It's gonna look at their social media integration. So how well did they do that? Do they have the basic sites on their website such as Facebook Twitter Instagram uh, it's going to go through SEO so looking at those keywords and page descriptions that we talked about earlier it's also going to look at lead generation and if the website's mobile so it's completed their score is a 65 out of 100 so for this we'd give them a score of 4 out of 5 on our report meaning it's good but it's not up to par so you can actually go through and you can say, okay, here's blogging, let's read more. And it'll go through the website's blog. And it'll say what's important, what are they looking for, et cetera. So we can go ahead and go through that and see how well they did. Um, we can then go and look at their social media integration and see exactly, okay, well, they tweeted 33 minutes ago. This is what they tweeted. Here's their keywords. Here's their followers. Um, what's their average time between tweets we can look at all of that information we can then look at SEO so we can look and see okay well for all the images on their website they don't have alt tags and alt tags are basically just descriptions of the images because um, search engines can't tag or um, search or find images unless there's alt tags descriptions of the images so they don't do this so very well so that needs to be done um, and it'll go through why that's important 
Um, it'll also look at pages that are linking back to them, which they don't have anybody linking back to them, which is something that they're going to want to work on as well. We then look at lead generation. So people who come to the site, um, how many of those people actually turn into customers? Um, since it is a supermarket website, it's kind of hard to find out because uh, people aren't exactly ordering things on their website. There aren't forms on the site, um, unless we dig a little further, and there are. Um, but typically for markets, there aren't. Um, so we wouldn't be able to figure out that information through this type of site. Um, we would on the other ones that we would critique. So it does depend on your industry. And also mobile um, devices, is, it, is there a mobile version? And for this specific um, website, um, it, there is. 43% uh, of all their phones and smartphones it shows up on, and 87% of them use it to access the internet. So um, that's also a good check as well. So that's how Marketing Grader works. Okay, so the next criteria, we're actually um, going to look at another website, and we're gonna go ahead and look at Loganita's website. Uh, Loganitas is a brewing company out in California, as well as they just opened up a location here in Chicago, um, and they are attending today. So we'll go ahead and look at um, some more criteria and compare it to their site. So let's familiarize ourselves with the site very quickly. Here's their logo. Um, this is talking about Chicago Brewery, what's on tap right now. Um, today's Thursday, so it's showing us uh, that there are tasting tours at 1, 3, and 5. It's kind of cute. Um, walking tours, telling you what, how to get there. Um, it's also giving you a menu, a food menu, uh, calendar. So there's a lot of information on their homepage. Um, I would actually say that this homepage is kind of overwhelming. Um, it needs to be looked at uh, because there's just too much going on. And this should be the home page. Okay. Okay, we weren't on the home page. That was an internal page. But even when you're on the home page, look at this. There's a lot of information, a lot of things going on. The blog, um, their tweets. We've got their upcoming events. We've got their different locations. We've got uh, new brews that are coming up. We've got a slideshow going on, many navigation, so a lot going on. Um, but let's go ahead and look at the uh, next criteria in our usability report, which is consistency. So we spoke earlier about consistency where users want to see the same thing page to page. So not necessarily the same content images, obviously. Um, but making sure that the logo is in the upper left-hand corner, that the menu navigation didn't change, positions, locations. Um, if there is a slideshow, making sure that that slideshow continues throughout the website. Uh, making sure that if there's contact information on every page of the site, making sure it's consistent and in the same location. Um, so just kind of going through and making sure that all of that is consistent. So let's go ahead and actually just click an internal page. So we'll go to music. So we see that what happens is that slider went away, which is fine. Some uh, designs of websites do that. That's fine. Um, but we want to make sure that there's consistency. So the logo is in the same spot, the search box, and the menu navigation is as well. Uh, we have a box here that pops up. So we clicked on music. So it's showing us um, music lineup here. Uh, and it also then goes into live at Loganinas, so some more music. Um, then we've got some other information. We've got videos, um, live music in the California location as well, um, some artists that they've met along the way, so, and then a t-shirt too. Um, having to do with music. So a lot of information, again, same footer, which is good. So consistency. But let's see if there is consistency. So let's click on another internal page. So we have stories. Um, so the same thing, we actually have, um, we have stories, we have all the stories that are coming up, uh, as well as um, some blog posts, too with the same uh, footer. So there is consistency within the website, which is good. 
Now we want to make sure that standard information that we give our users is included, um, such as contact information in the main menu. So if we were to go back to the home page here and we wanted to contact Lagunitas, how would we do that? Well, here's their main menu navigation. And what I would want to see is contact us as an option. Um, not sure why we don't see that. Um, it's not here. So if we wanted to contact them, how would we do that? Say we wanted to call them to find out uh, who was playing at the brew room today. Um, so we would, typical users would scroll all the way down and then here's the contact. So they actually have a separate menu in the footer that's not consistent with the menu at the header. So that's a problem because users are having to reorient themselves and not many users are going to scroll to the bottom of the page to contact them unless they really, really, really want to find the information. So they would get a low score from us for that. I mean, you want people to be able to contact you anytime they're on the site. So there should be availability at the header of the site as well as the footer of the site. Okay, the next criteria that we look at is the wireframe of the site. So how is the website laid out? Is it laid out in a way that makes sense to users? Uh, especially if it's a site where they need to order information or order products. How long is that process to order a product? Some sites you'll go to, um, let's say a clothing website and you want to purchase a shirt. Um, and there's 20 different clicks before you get to the actual checkout form. Um, and it's just crazy. They want you to fill out a form um, when you first get in or log in, create a login. Uh, create a new account, come as a guest. If you want to not make an account and you come in as, an, as a guest, there's extra steps um, because they want to get more information from you. And so then what ends up happening is users leave the site. They say, this is too frustrating. This is too much information. This is too many steps. I'm leaving. I'll get it somewhere else. Um, so you want to make sure that the steps um, you limit them as much as possible. You try to simplify that process um, as much as possible for users so that way they don't get irritated. So on this site, um, let's say I want to go ahead and I want to purchase, let's say we went to that music page and there was a t-shirt that you could purchase. Um, let's say I want to purchase one of their t-shirts. So looking at their main menu navigation, would I be able to figure that out? Um, I don't see a store listed. Um, maybe I would click here and see if there's something. Okay. So here is their actual store. So this goes back to consistency. This is an internal page within the site where you can actually purchase items, uh, shirts, sweatshirts, whatever you want, uh, beer, um, and it takes you to a different website bad, bad, bad usability here. Um, so those of you who are at Loganinas that are logged in, I see you guys are making some comments. Uh, this is really poor usability because what is this doing? This isn't keeping with consistency that we talked about earlier. So when you're on the main website and you click this page, a whole new website comes up. Well, what does that do from what we talked about earlier? That makes users have to reorient themselves a new website comes up in a new uh, tab. And so now they're on a new website. They have to familiarize themselves with the menu navigation again because it's changed. They're a little confused because this says Lagunitas Brewing Company, so which is their real website. Um, here's a phone number. Do I contact this phone number to contact the brewery? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. So what should happen, ideally, is when you click on Schwag, what should happen is the store should open up on this page. So it should look and feel just like the rest of the site, the rest of the internal pages. So it should have a black square like this and have the store and have categories that you choose, um, making it very simple for users instead of opening up an entire new website, which I'm sure the reason for this is that they have a couple of locations and they didn't want to change the shopping cart. Um, 
but as far as usability goes, this is really bad. So uh, that does need to be fixed. So we would actually go through and say, okay, I want to purchase um, a shirt for my baby. So I click on baby toddler. Let's say I want to add this to my cart. Um, so we would actually physically go through the process of purchasing an item and seeing how long it takes, what's the process, how do you check out. Uh, let's go ahead and just click check out and see. Do you have to create an account? Yes, you do. So you have to go through all of this. Let's just continue as a guest. Then we would fill out this information, our billing information. Um, any gift cards here, we would place our order. So pretty simple, straightforward. However, we're on a brand new website. So let's go ahead and look at the rest of the criteria um, with the other three sites that we're exploring today live. Um, and we'll go ahead and go to Cisco's. So let's familiarize ourselves with the website first. So we're on the home page. Um, we're pretty much all familiar with Cisco. So uh, we have their logo in the upper left hand corner. We have their main menu navigation, which uh, the labeling looks pretty simple. Um, we also have some login. Usually when a website has logins um, or accounts or registering, that's all at the top. Um, so they do a good job there. Um, when I quickly just clicked over these items, look at the submenus. There's submenu categories and then there's pages under those categories as well. So we talked earlier about main menu navigation and those submenus and how information can get lost or we can get information overload very quickly by having too many submenus. Um, Cisco has a lot of information on their site, which I understand um, from previously going to it and from them attending previous webinars um, where, we re where we have reviewed their site. So I'm pretty familiar with the site. Uh, there is a lot of information that needs to be presented to users. And so this is the most logical way that they could come up with um, because I've spoken with a few of their uh, personnel at Cisco. So I know what they're trying to do and what they're trying to accomplish, but there is a different way to organize the information. Um, and that would come from an information architect actually looking at the pages of the website, looking at the content, and coming up with a more logical way to display this information to users that isn't sensory overload. So this is, this is a lot here. This is a lot. Support. Um, Wow, you guys have added more stuff to it. Um, and we really need to look at that. So those folks at Cisco, if you could go ahead and pass that word along, that this is a little overload uh, for users. We'd be more than happy to help you guys with that. Um, so again, looking at the site, looking at the home page, do we get a clear understanding of what the business is about? Yes, we do. Very clear message, clear taglines, clear imagery, clear labeling. So let's look at this criteria, simple navigation system. Um, we look at how many main menu items there are in the menu, and we see that we have five, which is good. But then we have the submenus. So here we would give them a score of five out of five because they're under, um, they're between that four to six main menu options. It's good labeling. However, then we would make a comment and say, okay, your submenus, we need to look at these pages and see if we can um, make some pages combine into one, get rid of some pages, uh, go ahead and look at the content, make sure it's not too wordy, we're not repeating ourselves. There isn't repeated content on different internal pages, so a couple, um, like three or four, which can happen, which I've seen on this site as well. Um, so we would look at that and that would be the score that we would give them and the comments that we would give them. Okay, so the next criteria is clearly distinct labeling. So obviously products and services, I can click on that and I'm going to get a list of Cisco's products and services. Very easy, very straightforward. Uh, support, I'm going to get support for their products, how to buy their products, clear labeling. Um, Something that's not clear though is how do I contact Cisco? So again, there's no contact us button at the top. Um, if we look at the bottom of the page, so we'll go ahead and scroll through everything. Is there a way to contact them? So here we're actually seeing more, 
menus, um, more labeling, more information. So this website is very information overload for users uh, and hard to find information as well, which what's going to end up happening is that users are going to be like, I can't figure out where I find the information that I came to the site in the first place for, so I'm just going to use the search box. So it's good that they have a search box because that's another criteria um, that's coming up um, so to help users who might get lost. But the whole point is that you don't want users to get lost on your website. You want to alleviate that uh, search box, uh, making your menu navigation clear and concise so that users don't have to use it. Because if they're using it, that means they're frustrated with the site, they can't find anything, they're sick of looking, um, but they need the information. So the next criteria is, does the website conform to web standards? So we look at hyperlinks, making sure that they're um, underlined in blue. Um, we're looking for header sizes. Are they in large font? Um, is there consistency throughout the site? So I'll go ahead and click on some internal pages. So let's go ahead and click on security. So here we can see good, clear headings. Um, the sizes are good. Uh, font size is good of the content. It's giving us the information that we came to look for. It's all about security. There is consistency, so we're happy with that. So they would get a good score. Um, readability, font size, color, we just talked about. Uh, grammar and verbiage. A lot of websites that we look at, there are spelling errors, typos, poor grammar. Um, the readability level doesn't match the user. So as I talked about earlier with Standard Market and other clients that use that black and white, um, black background, white content, uh, you know, white color for their content, um, but they have an elderly user group. And so it makes it hard for them to read. Um, or they have an older group um, that might have a harder time and they have small font sizes. So, um, you know, really conforming your website to your users and actually understanding who your users are is very, very important. Um, but within content, you really want to make sure there are no spelling errors, no typos, no poor grammar. Um, and we see that all the time. You know, if you're not sure, to simply cut and paste your content into Word and it'll show you all the errors uh, that you, maybe you weren't even aware of. And the other thing too is when you have spelling errors, typer, typos, or poor grammar, uh, users lose trust within your site. They lose trust within your product and your services and they don't want to hire you um, because you couldn't even make sure that your site didn't have errors within it. So. Um, something to think about as well. Uh, we've already talked about this criteria a couple times when we talked about menu navigation, making sure that your contact information is always available, um, making sure that it, there is a contact us at the very top of the page or there's contact information at the top of the page, as well as at the footer, because if someone does scroll through a page of your website, they get to the bottom and they want to contact you, you don't want to make an extra step and have them click or scroll back up to the top to try to find that information. It should be there as well. So at the header and the footer, and there should also be a contact us page. So for this site, there is no way to contact them at the top of the page. However, at the bottom and the footer, um, yes, contacts, contact Cisco, we see that. So they want to add something at the top of their pages so that people can call them, email them, find them on social media, whatever needs to happen. So it is 2.50 here in Chicago, so we have about 10 minutes left of the webinar, so we need to get through uh, some more websites here. So let's go ahead and go to Wayfair now. One thing that we haven't talked about um, that just happened here, and it also happened on Loganitas' website because they have to make sure that you're 21 or older, are pop-ups when you first get to the site. Um, we understand here at Situate Research why companies do that. Um, it's to capture, lead capture, 
Um, it's also to uh, bring forth something like you have an offer or you want to um, just put out information very quickly to the user before they start searching through your site because you feel it's very important, special offers that you have. Um, some users find that very frustrating and they will leave the site immediately. So keep that in mind. So you have to do some user testing to see how your users would respond to pop-ups because every site's different. So the next criteria that we look at is flexibility and efficiency. So we're looking at that path or user journey that users have to take to find information that they came to this website for in the first place. So if a person was to come to Wayfair we're assuming they're going to want to purchase some type of furniture um, for their home. So let's say they want to purchase a dining room table. So we would go to furniture and we would go to dining room. And we're not, okay, dining tables, that will work, um, under kitchen and dining. So that's good labeling. And then we have some options here. So in the report, when we went to Lagunitas and we actually tried to purchase an item through their shopping cart, we would do that same thing here for this website and go through that purchasing um, journey to see are there steps that we could uh, get rid of and can we make the process simpler for our users. So that goes along with user journey or path. Um, so for this particular site, that would be what we would be looking at. So we can actually go here, let's say we want to look at this table, okay, and we say, okay, you know, this is a table that we want to purchase, um, so we'll go ahead and add it to our cart. Um, after we add it to our cart, okay, so it's not letting me do that, it's asking for a quantity, so we just want one, we'll pick a finish, we'll add it to the cart. We'll actually go to our cart. The shopping cart is empty. So this isn't really working that well. Um, so that would be the first thing that would need to be fixed. Shopping cart needs to work. Um, so we can't really test this user journey right now. I mean, we selected the finish. Let's go ahead and select again. We'll select the quantity. Okay, and we'll add it to our cart. Okay, and the wheel's spinning, so we'll wait a minute. We go to cart, and it still says the cart's empty. So obviously the shopping cart's broken, so that's something that needs to be fixed right away. We can't even test the user journey. So they would get a very low score for that. Um, the next criteria that we look at is minimalist design. So is your website over the top in terms of quantity of information? So again, content, graphics, etc. cetera. Um, this website is all about graphics because it's showing you products that they want you to purchase online. Um, we're actually, since we have six minutes left, we're gonna go to the last website that we were gonna look at today, which was Michael Graham Salon and Spa, which is that local company here in Naperville. And we're gonna go ahead and look and see do they have a good design? Is there too many graphics? Um, so they have a slider at the top um, showing some models, um, showing off some of uh, the things that they do at the salon, such as makeup, washing hair, cutting hair, um, so some of the services that they offer. But it's very hard to read the menu navigation. And as you just saw when I clicked over um, the submenus for the services, is very long as well. So that could be um, minimized uh, very easily too. Um, it's talking about locations, gift certificates, appointments, some recent news, another menu navigation, and some more imagery. So I would actually say that this site is a little image overload here. I mean, if we go to a page, let's go to body care, the slider is always consistently going, I'm thinking. Okay, well, if you go to an internal page, that's good. So we're not having a slider distract people. Um, and it's actually going through, okay, the services. So this is good. Um, but the home page is overload. So we look at that and actually try to make that um, 
more minimalist design for the users so that they can go through and actually find the information that they need without being distracted by the slider. Uh, help and documentation, so we're looking to see, okay, if a user comes to the site uh, and they're looking for certain information and they can't find it uh, and they don't want to leave the site and go to a different one uh, within the industry, can they find the information quickly? So is there a search box? Is there a site map? Uh, is there a help page? So here at the header of the website, we don't see any search items, search box, anything to help users. Uh, at the bottom, we're looking for a site map. We don't see that. Uh, we're also looking for that search box. Nothing's here. So this site does not give users any way of not becoming frustrated when they can't find certain information. So that's something that we would um, definitely give them a low score on and then tell them, okay, this is how you have to organize the website. This is what you need to add to the site. Let's add a search box. So in the report, um, there's some bonus areas that we look at. So we look to see, does your website um, look and function and display correctly on a mobile device? We look at iPads and smartphones, uh, particularly the iPhone. And so if it does, great. We let you know that there's no score for this criteria. Um, if it does, we tell you. If it doesn't, we tell you so that um, you can make sure that your website's responsive. And the last thing that we look at is SEO. So we look at page descriptions. So we actually look at the code of your site. Um, we look at page descriptions, keywords, and page titles. Um, to give you an SEO score, and that's all explained here what each item is. Uh, basically, it's just the way that search engines search your website and search the pages and content within your website. Uh, so we make sure that criteria is there, and we let you know if it is or if it's not, and if you get a low score, a medium score, or high score. And then finally, we give you that overall score of your site. So let me close this. Um, it's a score of 100, and as you can see, the scale 90 to 100 is excellent. Um, there's just a few tweaks that you have to do. Uh, good would be 80 to 90, um, meaning your website's good, but there are some things that need to be fixed. Average is the average site out there. Um, a lot of people fall within this range from 70 to 80. A lot of companies so a lot of them uh, need work so 55 to 70 we put that score there poor is 40 to 55 um, anything that needs work is poor needs overhaul those are all redesigns anything that's average or good just needs tweaks and anything that's excellent we really don't have to do anything to it might just be one criteria that needs to be fixed so we give you that overall score we tell you what you how you fall within the scale then we give you some final thoughts. We look at those programming errors on your home page by using validator.w3.org. And we explain why that's important, as we did earlier. And we also give you that overall SEO score at marketing.greater.com. So that is our report that you get for free. Um, and you want to make sure uh, that you get that report on your website because it is important and it does give you an insight into usability and how users actually are looking at your site, what they're thinking when they come to your site. Because remember, we actually have 10 users that evaluate your website and go through those 20 different unique areas of usability. So if you're interested in that free report, just contact us today. You can email us, visit our website, or give us a call. And we'd be more than happy to get that report to you. And we get that to you within 48 hours. And again, after you get the report, we wait a few days. We contact you to set up a time so that we can answer any questions that you might have. So it is 3 o'clock here in Chicago. We didn't get to Q&A. So if you do have any questions, um, I can see them in the chat box. I'll go ahead and answer those privately uh, and email those answers to you or we can set up a time to talk and answer those questions. So just let me know what you would like to do. Uh, again, I wanna thank you all for attending today's live session. Again, the recording will be made available to you within 48 hours on our website, as well as our Facebook, Twitter, 
and YouTube accounts. So thank you so much again for attending today. I hope you will attend a future webinar and we want you to have a great weekend. Take care.